Good morning. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to your uh, Yoga Solutions live broadcast with me, uh, Mark J. Aquaviva, on this rather glorious autumn day, uh, Tuesday, 29th of September, 2020. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. And um, yes, let us uh, begin. Um, I, I didn't see any questions before I started. Um, uh, by the way, if you if you'd like to put a question, best time to do it is uh, beforehand because um, once I get broadcasting, I've got all the tech up on the screen and um, my, my, the, the sort of broadcasting stuff, so um, I don't really get to see what's going on on Facebook. So um, yes, I didn't uh, didn't have any questions, so I'll, I'll just. Um, let you know where I'm at and perhaps something will arise from that. So, um, yes, well, I'm, I'm feeling wonderful today. Um, had an incredible meditation this morning and it was kind of fueled by, uh, the, uh, the beginning of my 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 online course that that, that I, I started last Sunday, well, it, the intro workshop, first of two intro workshops last Sunday, and uh, it was all about the um, well, Envirosomatic one is the title, and it's about it's about um, uh, unifying released relationships to um, our Earth and the space that we occupy, and uh, the outcome of that unification is kind of a wave-like movement, which is um, one of the foundations of the Scaravelli-inspired approach, if you, if you know what I mean. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, that was the, that was the workshop. And, and with, with all my teaching, I sort of, I get these kind of downloads, if you like, um, what, what seems to sort of land as a, as a general principle that makes sense. And then um, there's a kind of a, an intense time of practice whilst I'm trying to unravel the, the, the mystery of it, whilst I'm trying to sort of crystallize salient points that will help guide others to, to the same experience. Um, because my, my work isn't, well, as much as it's uh, fueled by knowledge, uh, the, the knowledge doesn't actually drive the practice. The, the practice is an exploratory thing in, in the true scientific principle. You know, you, you you have an idea, you practice, and then you see if the outcome um, marries up with the idea. Uh, and ideally, you, you don't force, <laughs> you don't try and surreptitiously force the outcome that you're looking for. Um, so so you get you get a handle on the truth of things. Um, so yeah, that, so that you know the the uh, making of these courses gets me to practice at a level that um, I possibly wouldn't bother going to at other times because I'm just in the flow of what's going on and uh, and when I do that without any agenda, when I come out the other side, quite often I have no uh, real recollection of how to recreate it. It's just um, something that happened in the in the process. You see, um, but. Um, when I'm putting on a course, then I need to be able to uh, have the skill of my sort of cognitive awareness present whilst being in the in total um, uncontrived presence to what's going on, which is <laughs> uh, quite a trick. And um, as anyone who works with me knows, uh, it's um, it's quite a trick even to do that when you've got someone guiding you. Yeah. You know? Um, but anyway, that, so that's my process. But all of it, all of it um, taps on the pipes, you know. Uh, it, it's a phrase I picked up from the book. Uh, there's a book called How the Yoga Works. It's quite a nice little story. Um, and they talk about the, the yoga taps on the pipes. And it's to sort of get the, get the actual flow going to actually, um, rather than working out how, how the plumbing works, you get to experience the flow and so you understand it directly uh, through through experience rather than um, through a cognitive process and um, yes yeah, so, so it's all it's all incredibly developmental for myself as well I, you know my, all my courses are meant to uh, 
guide people in a developmental process for themselves and um, the setting up of these things makes me go through a process and um, yes the, the, the centering on this idea of the wave the, the 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 wave being the the natural way that the the confluent um, breathing patterns and movement unite to give you a, a potential centered relationship to earth and space that gives you free 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 um free in the spine and um what was i saying oh yes yes so so yeah i spent a day doing that on sunday and it was fabulous so there's a, a nice small group uh, so there's room for more people if anyone wants to drop in next sunday but um it's a nice small group so we got very deep with it in, and uh, it was very gentle very deep and um, the outcome for me um, the, the people on the course loved it but this morning um, after another day of practicing with it because you know after the course I, I got clearer after the intro workshop I got clearer in my own practice so I was practicing all day Monday um, this morning when I was sitting I discovered these waves in, in the thing that I was talking about a, a, a kind of a kind of resonance with between space above me and the space below me a kind of standing wave that had the dynamic of allowing me to remain still and centered wherever I choose and uh, my, my my place of choice usually is the heart and it turns out that's the, one of the most sort of practical places in terms of being upright um, and being in the world but um, in my meditation this morning all, all of them turned up all, all, all the uh, pivotal points all the all the central points along the front of the spine that uh, refer to as chakras and um, together with the uh, the sort of relationships to below and above which would be root and crown all sort of um, are available as the central resonant point of this breathing wave that gives you the external experience of stillness whilst the internal dynamics um, keep you centered in that place and the outcome was, was phenomenal I at the end of the meditation I found myself um, laughing laughing for no particular reason I was laughing my head off and um, occasionally it was sort of almost turning into tears and, and it was an emotional release um, from directly from these centers it was a phenomenal experience and um, so I'm so grateful for this life path that I found myself on that um, uh, we, we, you know without the need to make sense of it for others then um, the development of my own mind's ability to to let go into the truth of things would not uh, have evolved to anywhere near the same degree and I would have been stuck in one part of the way that I was in you know I had a preferential um, relationship to so um, anyway so I'm feeling fabulous um, I don't know if that's any use to anyone <laughs> probably not um, but um, yes I just thought I'd share where, with you where I'm at and uh, yes as I, I didn't uh, notice any questions before I started uh, maybe I should share some of the practical applications of this idea with you so um yeah uh god knows where to start um let, let, let's see let's um let's lie down and see what happens uh with the idea that there's um yes well let's just see so uh this is me arriving in a pleasurable relationship to the earth which this morning after my meditation I, I recognize as exactly what cats do <laughs> it's uh you know it's just a 
total presence to everything around as you surrender to your contact. Um, and that's a good starting point because uh, you know the, the, the internal tensions are sourced in our stories. Uh, uh, you know, the moment you are in this position of support, there's no physiological reason for holding on to them. So it's the person that has to decide to let go. And when you let go wholeheartedly into contact, whilst remaining wholeheartedly with the space that you're occupying, the outcome to both, the, the outcome of the relationship to both is that the spine no longer has to lift or um, carry your weight. But nonetheless, there will be movement. And the, there'll be movement source in giving your weight to touch and allowing yourself to be moved in space. So, first, firstly, um, just that generic idea of let the hell go <laughs> to see what happens. And then um, we're letting go and the mind gets interested in the, in the sensations of the body. And as I'm letting go, I'm noticing that the base of the spine is a little heavier than my feet. I could change that or I could see what it's about. So if I'm investigating this contact that I have with the base of the spine, uh, from the base of the spine with the earth, that, uh, that's what I need to be clear about. It's a relationship between the two. It's not the base, the base of the spine. It's my spine and the earth beneath it. So the way I relate to the upcoming contact is up to me. So what, what I'm finding is there's a bit of heaviness in the base of the spine, a bit of extra weight in the base of the spine, but it's not unpleasant because I'm allowing movement. I'm allowing waves of movement that follow the breath. So I'm going to investigate that a little more. What happens if I fully invite my contact to the earth through the base of the spine to be my support as the natural wave of arrival of the breath occurs? So if I decide to drop into the base of the spine as I breathe, what happens? And if I, if I was uh, locked in the right and wrong of things, I would be worried by and work against the thing that happens. The thing that happens when I do that is an extension response that starts in the lumbar. And um, if I worry, then I'll keep it there. And I'll get stuck in that position thinking that that's what needs to happen. But, it, but the breath is not a static thing, it's fluid, it's a wave. So if when I receive the breath from the contact from the base of the spine, if I allow it to move, then it can land elsewhere. And the place that it would naturally land on will be my shoulders and upper back to start with. So that worry about the lumbar curve being present disappears because it's just a moment in time that is the part of the whole picture of a wave-like movement. So let's explore that more. I drop into the base of the spine to breathe. I find the movement that the breath follows. And it seems to want to give my weight to my upper back and shoulders. So let's try and land the release of the breath on that. And the result was a wave-like release into movement. So here I am. I have now have my weight on my shoulders and my head. I want to be able to drop through those things, so it mustn't make my neck unnecessarily tight, my throat unnecessarily tense. So I need to find a good 
comfortable relationship to the earth so that I can drop into touch. And when I do that with the release of the breath, I'll get more relaxed. If I do it with the arrival of the breath, it seems to invite a wave in the opposite direction. So, and then when I release the breath, where, where am I going to let it go? Let's give it back to the ground in the upper back. And without any contrivance, there seemed to be a wave that put me back on the ground. So let's try that again from the base of the spine. From the upper back. And it's in the allowance of the changes that it becomes fluid. You know, if, if at the apex, at the top of this movement, if I decided that I wanted to stay here, then when I release the breath and I gave my weight to the ground here, then I would be stiff because I'd have to hold myself and catch myself. So if I can let go and let go wholeheartedly, there's still a released relationship to the ground that allows these curves to move that allows me to move with freedom rather than control. So that's one thing. Uh, so, say I didn't want to come back to the ground, say I wanted to find something else. So let's try again. I drop into the base of the spine to breathe and I allow the wave that happens with that so I can release the breath into the ground somewhere else. So let's cause another place for me to give for me to be able to give my weight so if i now make it confluent make it equal arms head shoulders so that i can let go and i can drop into my base to breathe When I let go, I can let go into my base. And it'll, it's likely, if I'm starting at the head end of things, it's likely to end up on the elbows. So I can, if I want to come out of that, I'll find the ground again. I want to try the other side, so I'm getting a little bit cognitive. But I still need to set up conditions that leaves me free. In the throat, the breathing. Then I can land on my base as I breathe. It leads to one movement. I can land on my base as I release the breath. And another movement occurs. So here I am on my base, head and shoulders. Let's mix it up a bit. So I'm gonna I'm taking hold of a big toe. I want the conditions of release. So I need to allow my weight to be felt equally. I need to trust my touch, which includes holding on to the big toe. So I can relax. It includes the toe holding on to the foot. So I can relax. And then I can let go into the contact to breathe. And when I follow that wave, there can be an equally uncontrived release into the earth. The, the appearance of control is simply because the body is less heavy 
it's less heavy so you don't have to you don't have to drop heavily because you're constantly relating the breath and its release to the ground the effort is it is simply in reorganizing the weight that's it and that happens from within that happens from the, the way the breath moves naturally if you can stay with harmonious relationships to the earth which would be equal contact throughout the cycles of breathing oh, the, uh, the apex of breathing whether it's in or out that will leave me where I am and then allowing the wave of movement that occurs as I drop to breathe it's the beginning of the movement and I need to let go into movement <sighs> So I rely on my touch, I rely on my earth, I rely on the wave of release of the breath. To arrive once again in touch. I can breathe from the base of the spine. And when I release the breath, I can give it to my head and shoulders. I can release into the base of the spine to breathe. And when I let go of the breath, I can give it to my feet. I can breathe into my feet as I breathe, as I, as I let go. And when I release the breath, I can release back through the pelvis. Then onto my shoulders. I can breathe into my equal contact to the feet, if I can organize that. There it is. And when I release back through the pelvis, when I release back through the base of the spine, when I release back through the head, when I release back through the throat, perhaps I can release into my hands. So I can breathe into my hands by dropping into my hands, and then I can release the breath, perhaps arriving on my feet. I can breathe into my hands and feet and release into both. <laughs> I didn't work out how to come down, so I had to lower my weight. But there you go. <laughs> but uh, th this sort of um, intention to surrender, surrender to the nature of things, is quite a discipline. Because we, we have our agendas, we have our ambitions, we... We want to get into the posture, and we want to look graceful. We want to feel good, you know. And all these ambitions tend to interfere with the actual nature of the thing. The ambition is 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 good, but if you want to be clever about it. The way to get to the outcome you're looking for is Ishvara Pranidhana, surrender of personal will to something greater. Which, um, in well, Ishvara Pranidhana means surrender to the divine. I'm content at the moment to surrender to the innate wisdom of the breath to the friend that is gravity and to allow the nature of the wave uh, to occur and um, it's yielding some incredible results for me at the moment so I, I hope that sharing that with you has helped in some way so um,
yes, thank you for watching. Um, what have I got going on? Well, I, I've got uh, the, the second intro workshop next Sunday. There's space to drop in. I, I, I'm allowing drop-ins. Uh, I probably, I might do that throughout the course. I'll, I'll see how it goes. Depends on numbers. Um, there are three-hour workshops on Sundays with uh, optional one-hour Q&A in the afternoon to iron out any difficulties for people. And uh, you don't have to come to that if you don't want to. Um, it's, it's all book, it's bookable on the website, and there's links along this group, all over this group. Um, so that's next Sunday, and then uh, later in the month uh, of October, I, I generally do two Saturday morning, two and a half hour uh, re retreat, gentle flow retreat workshops. Uh, anyone can join, and um, all all my stuff is is online at the moment. And um, it will stay there until until um, all this uh, the COVID nonsense is well, it's not nonsense, but the the um, the, the COVID complications have settled because because uh, this is a as good a medium of teaching as any other. I'm I'm, I'm sure um, I, do, I do miss a little the hands-on stuff, but um, I get to work with my partner and uh, those close to me, so it's, it's so I still get that satisfied. But um, yeah, so all my stuff is online, and um, uh, you can work with me one to one, etc. Uh, but uh, any of my events, my classes, I've got, I've got one later on today and another one tomorrow. There's a there's a more intermediate one on Monday evenings. Um, all of them, everything's half price if you um, want to save a bit of cash and uh, go through the process, live, uh, go through the thing live with me, but view only. So, um, so my en uh, energies of response are with those that have paid for an interactive place, um, and uh, it works beautifully for some people. You know, if if, if you're someone that likes to um, be completely in your own process, uh, in your own interpretations, in your own journey with things, then it, it will probably suit you better than being on screen, and it's half price. <laughs> those of you that um, uh, like. Uh, a bit of guidance and like a uh, bit of direct guidance in response to what you've got going on, then I will be able to pick up on the blocks uh, as I see them, uh, as I see you move. So I'll be able to give you hints as how to find solutions to that. So some people will prefer that. Um, and obviously that takes more energy So from me. So um, that's why the price is higher. But um, anyway, uh, that's what I've got going on. Uh, mostly weekend workshops and my classes Monday evenings for intermediate. It's a, I go a bit deeper and a bit less um, simplistic, I suppose. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays, um, I, I keep it very straightforward. Uh, I try to anyway. <laughs> and um, I just guide you through an experience that will make you feel nice. Um, okay, um, that's about it, I think. I think I'm done for this week um yes now i hope i hope that was useful i i thoroughly enjoyed it and i'm feeling amazing at the moment um i'll try not to attach to that because uh, these things come in waves too and i shall see you same time same place next week for your weekly yoga solutions live broadcast much love to you all bye now <laughs>